Hello. Hello, Whitehorse. It's good to be here. We've traveled a very long way. And it was worth the trip. The whole way it was worth the trip. And this is just icing on the top. Thank you very much. Icing. <laughs> icing on the top. We'll put candles on it in just a minute. <clears throat> uh, before I even get started, how many people have already seen uh, a video that I did or have been to the web page? How many people have seen the video? Okay, about, about uh, one quarter of you. And how many people here have studied anything about the Mayan calendar? About a third, okay. That gives me an idea of who I'm talking to and uh, what I'm gonna have to say. And it, we're gonna go through some very, very basic information about the Mayan calendar. Probably much different than you thought you would hear. We're gonna be covering some very new ideas. And that's the whole reason for you being here. I want to make sure, like Madeline, my partner, said, if at any time during this talk, oh, and come on in. <laughs> if at any time, oh, you too, come on in. <laughs> We've got some more people showing up. If at any time something isn't really clear, raise your hand. Because this is not a lecture. This is a conversation. This is a two-way street here. Okay? It is my job to make sure that you are imparted this information and that you understand it. It's your job to make sure that I'm doing that. Okay? All right. So what are we going to be talking about tonight? We are going to be talking about consciousness. consciousness and calendars. What is consciousness? There sure has been a lot of people who have studied it, huh? Probably most of you have studied consciousness for a while or you wouldn't be interested in new things like this. So Many people come up with a different definition for consciousness in their studies. And it's really useful for us all to have an agreement when we get started here of what consciousness is. And one that I've found works really well, and I'll just throw it out as an idea, is that consciousness is the awareness of being aware. Whenever you've noticed yourself noticing something, you have been experiencing your own consciousness. Most of the time we just go about using it, you know, avoiding other cars on the road, uh, you know, <clears throat> actually opening the screen door rather than walking into it, that kind of thing. That's using your consciousness. But when you notice yourself noticing something, you are experiencing your consciousness. Does that make sense? That fits? Okay. All right, consciousness then would be the awareness of being aware. And then calendars. What is a calendar? This is stuff that you didn't get talked about in school very much. But a calendar is the absolute dead center of any civilization. It is the pinpoint center of any civilization. It's calendar. Why? Because absolutely everything in that civilization revolves around its calendar. Due dates, bill dates, when you're supposed to be at work, when you're supposed to go into grammar school, when you're supposed to graduate, how old you are, <laughs> All of those things are relative to the calendar. 
including the evaluation of your performance. How many widgets can you produce by Wednesday? That's how valuable you are. It's all related to the calendar. A calendar is a, an agreement of a society or a civilization of what day it is or what time it is. And that is the absolute dead center of any civilization's consciousness. Your consciousness of what has come before or what will come in the future is all related to our calendar. Can you see how pivotal that is? In fact, it's a funny thing about consciousness. Consciousness always, always has a location. It looks sort of like this. Here's a, a pinpoint here. More like a target that represents your consciousness. Your consciousness is oriented by two considerations. A consideration is a decision on how things are. Okay? These considerations, one of them is time and the other is place. Time and place is the orientation of your consciousness. It's actually working right here and right now. Some time ago, you had the consideration that you would be at this talk. And ever since, you have been handling things that came up and your own considerations to where you would, that you would be in this place. This time and this place. It's been that way throughout your whole life. Time and place, time and place, time and place. So here you are, in this time and place. Welcome. As a matter of fact, you've probably noticed that different places have a different orientation to their consciousness. How many people have been to Vancouver? Okay, does Vancouver have a different consciousness than Whitehorse? Yes. And when you were in school, you studied about different times, didn't you? And somebody in the 15th century, for instance, would have a different consciousness than you would, wouldn't they? There are things that wouldn't quite fit in their consciousness that you're using every single day. And there's certain things that they had to do every single day, like carrying water, for instance, that wouldn't fit so comfortably in your consciousness, would it? So different times have a different orientation of consciousness, as well as different places. <clears throat> But this orientation, this time and place, what this is, this operation, is it's actually establishing a thing called your viewpoint. Your viewpoint. This is your point from which you view the universe. Your viewpoint is absolutely sacred. For one simple reason. You're the only one who can have it. In all of infinity and in all of the life forms and types throughout the whole universe, you are the only person who can have your viewpoint. 
people can approximate or kind of agree with your viewpoint, but they can't have yours. As a matter of fact, you probably already noticed, you can't even give yours away. So it's very important to understand that all of this information we're going to be going through this evening is not at all to change or alter your viewpoint. That's your job. We're only going to feed your viewpoint. And then you do with it what you will. Is that agreed? Okay. And I want to go into something very important right on the first page here. There is one law in the universe. One law. It's broken down into many others, but there's only one. One law. What that law is, is what you pay attention to is what you become conscious of. It doesn't matter if you're just a little kid with three ants on a stick and that's what you're paying attention to. Or if you're some multi-dimensional being looking over five universes. What you pay attention to is what you become conscious of. Always. And people talk about free will. You know, where's my free will? There is only really one exercise of your free will, too. That's your choice of what you're going to pay attention to. Always it's your choice. I had one lady say, but I don't want to pay attention to pain, you know. I wouldn't choose that. Well, have you noticed that some people can stand more pain than others? Some people go right on with a sprained ankle, and other people can't hobble another foot. Have you noticed that? Have you? Yeah. And sometimes you even can put up with more than other times, right? What is that? Sometimes you're paying more attention to the pain. Sometimes you're paying more attention to other stuff. And whose choice was it? <laughs> so in all circumstances, your free will boils down to what you choose to pay attention to. Now we're ready. <clears throat> The absolute dead center of our civilization is called the Gregorian calendar. Gregorian calendar. And that was actually put into place in 1582 by a guy named Pope Gregory. Uh, 1582 was called Year of our Lord. Remember those old time movies? You know, with the pirates and the, the and, and the crier comes through town and he's crying out, you know. This year, that year, year of our Lord. Okay. This Gregorian calendar was the establishment by the Catholic Church of what day it was. And what the Gregorian calendar is about is this. <laughs> I like this part. <laughs> there. That's our sun. Okay? And around our sun, is us. We go around the sun. 
like that. And we go around the sun every 365 and one quarter days. Here, I'm going to put some. I'm going to put some continents on here. And make this. This is the planet Earth. Yeah, there we go. There. We go around the sun every 365 and one quarter days. So, our whole concept of time, and the very center of our consciousness, is about these cycles repetitive cycles of action. In fact, if you look up time in the dictionary, time equals motion. Motion of physical things. Okay? Now, the Gregorian calendar, I don't know if you, did you guys study a lot in history or did you go to sleep in history? <laughs> I went to sleep in history. <laughs> but I've uh, since gained a, a really uh, a, a bigger appreciation. But the Gregorian calendar, if you've studied history, you know that the Gregorian calendar did not go down very easily with indigenous people. The Gregorian calendar went out with the Spanish and with the Catholic bishops and they conquered lands and then told people what day it was. Most civilizations already had their own calendar, see? And then these guys come along and say, ah, ah, no. This is the day. It didn't go down very easy. They had to kill millions and millions of people to get them to follow this Gregorian calendar. And what this Gregorian calendar was all about was the physical measurement of our orbit. And it turns out that this is a very, very insidious tool. You probably never thought that a calendar could be so evil. But what this calendar has done is it has pinned our civilization's consciousness to physical evidence only. The absolute dead center of our civilization is focused on only physical evidence. The measurement of physical objects moving through space. That's why it's not year of our Lord anymore because there has been a steady erosion of our consciousness of things other than physical. Remember we used to have religious holidays like Christmas and Easter. Have you noticed that a really good Christmas now is a whole lot of stuff sold to a whole lot of people? Same with Easter. It's a buying, marketing frenzy, isn't it? Especially in the cities, huh? There has been a steady erosion of our consciousness of things other than physical because our calendar has directed our consciousness only in that direction. That is insidious. So I think then it's just not just an indictment of the Gregorian calendar as such because other solar calendars or lunar calendars that are used in some cultures that, that w the same, it's based, if it's based on the cycles of the moon, it's just as physical, isn't it? Such yes, it is. A, an Islamic calendar or Jewish calendar that they're lunar, are they just as bad then for that? They are, but not as concentrated. They were also, they why were all... It, why is the solar calendar worse then? Uh, this, this particular calendar is worse because now this calendar has been adopted as the commerce calendar. It's the calendar by, on which all things are bought and sold. Every computer is programmed with this calendar. 
to a certain degree, all those other calendars were physical calendars. They have all gone into less and less use, haven't they? Because they had some spiritual aspects to them. And because they did, they were shunned. They were thrown away. It was all narrowed down to this is the calendar and this is the day. You know what the word dogma means? Anybody out there know what the, you know what the word dogma means? It doesn't sound like a good word, does it? The word means unquestioned belief. Dogma. Doesn't sound very healthy. You know what the biggest dogma is on earth? What day it is. Nobody even questions it. And if they should, that person's crazy. Yeah, this is a really powerful tool to dominate people's consciousness, which is senior to their body. And it is senior to their actions. You see, there is a cascade of event. It goes like this. Consciousness, then light, then thought, then action. Consciousness first, then light, then thought, then the event. In every case, in all ways. So, you control somebody's consciousness, you got them. Soul, mind, and body, you got them. So, here we are, all of us from birth, including our parents and our grandparents from birth, all of us have been brainwashed with this focus. Every one of us, me too, every one of us has been brainwashed. Welcome to the rinse cycle. You see, most, uh, uh, first of all, you, you've, you've probably heard about other calendars. Like we were talking about the Hebrew calendar, the Islamic calendar. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all indigenous calendars, all of the most ancient indigenous calendars, had something in common. All of them were 360 days. 360 days long. Well, the archaeologists, they understand that that is the vague solar year, is what they call it. And they have the opinion that these ancient people were so primitive that they couldn't figure out how long the year was. So they just approximated it into 360 days. Well, the Maya had a 360-day calendar. We're going to be talking a whole lot about it. They also knew exactly how long it took for the Earth to go around the sun. They had a calendar like this, the Hob calendar, which was a 365 and one quarter day calendar. All these ancient civilizations had 360-day calendars. Maybe they were looking at something other than this motion of Earth around the sun. Maybe they were paying attention to something other than physical evidence. It's possible. We'll take a look. The Maya actually had two calendars at the very center of their civilization. One was called the Zolkin. I'm going to go to the bigger pen. One was called the Zolkin. Spelt like that. It means, this means count and this means day. 
So this whole thing means count of days. And the Zolkin calendar was 260 days long. Those of you who have studied something about the Mayan calendar are probably familiar with this one. This is the, the astrological calendar of the Maya. Or the personal calendar of the Maya. Now, who, who is, knows about the astrology part of the calendar? Anybody out there? Oh, okay. One, one person. Oh, like the, like the astrological thing, the aspects of the Mayan calendar. There is an astrological aspect to this, to this particular calendar. The, there are 13 intentions on the part of creation 13 intentions and 20 different aspects of creation that are represented in this calendar. 13 times 20 is 260. So there's a pattern. As a matter of fact, that's what this is right here. This uh, is a tool that I invented and designed and had produced. And what this tool does is it will take the Gregorian calendar, month and day and the year, and transpose it to the Mayan calendar and show you what day it is on the Mayan calendar. Okay? Today happens to be seven wisdom. Seven is one of the intentions. Seven means alignment with divine will or ethics. And the aspect of creation is wisdom today. So according to the Maya and this calendar, all of creation is resonating with the energies of divine will and wisdom. And that's the purpose of the day. That's the astrological aspect of this 260-day calendar. And by the way, all this information that it's, we'll have these in the back later, but all this information, I went to the Maya lands and met with the Maya shaman and had all of this verified by them. Uh, so there are the, is the actual traditional information there. See, the Maya, this, this is a personal calendar. How personal can a calendar be? Well, in the Mayan civilization, your first name was the name of the day that you were born. The Maya had this idea that being as you were spiritual, you had a choice of which day you became physical. But you actually had a choice. And why would you pick one day over any other day? Probably because you liked it best. Probably because it agreed with your intention for this life and what you planned to demonstrate as your aspect. So every single person born as a Maya came in knowing exactly why they were here. And everyone else in the society knew exactly why they were here. Wouldn't that have saved us a little bit of trouble? <laughs> in fact, if you do some study, I did do some study of psychology, and if you do some study of inmates, both in prison and in mental institutions, what the whole problem usually boils right down to is that person was never acknowledged for what they came here for. In a lot of cases they were blamed or something was, the reason you're here is make me miserable, that kind of thing. 
what they didn't get was acknowledged for why they chose to be here. The Mayan civilization ran very successfully for 5,000 years with this information, all the way up until the Catholic Church showed up and completely destroyed their civilization. The Maya are still there, by the way. There's over 8 million Maya who are living in Guatemala and the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. 8 million. They're not extinct. Not a lot of them follow their ancient traditions anymore, but some do. Then there's another calendar, another Mayan calendar. This calendar was celebrated every single day, every morning. There was there were celebrations. Yeah. yeah question. Yeah. Microphone, please. <laughs> you just made a statement. You know. you just, I don't think so. Oh, there it goes. Uh, you just made a statement about 5,000 years. Um, yes. What, what are you basing that on? What, what kind of statement is that? What is that? The 5,000 years? Yeah. It was from the, pr the pre-classic, the, and then the classic period, and then the, the civilization crashed, and then it went on into the post-classic period. So it was the blending of the Olmec and the Maya. <clears throat> Then we have the Tune calendar. The Tune. This calendar doesn't get talked about very much. Hasn't yet been talked about very much by the archaeologists. They talked about, when you hear about the archaeologists talk about the Mayan calendar, they usually, or the Aztec calendar, they're actually talking about this Hob calendar. It's the one that they understood. This calendar was used for one purpose and one purpose only, taxes. It was the bookkeeping calendar of the Maya. They were an agrarian society, and when could they pay their taxes? When the crops came in. So this calendar was used by the city-states for administration purposes. These two calendars, this was celebrated every day by every person, and this calendar was known as the divine, divine, or prophetic calendar of the Maya. Have you heard about the Mayan prophecies and how phenomenally accurate they are? and have been, this calendar, this tune calendar is where those prophecies were generated. It is a 360 day calendar. We'll be talking mostly about this calendar. I'm gonna show you a graphic of how these two work together. This is the 260-day calendar. And here, see if I can do this. Not bad. This is the Zolkine. That's the tune. And each day on this calendar, was like a tooth on a gear, like that. And there's 260 of them. And then over here, there's 360 days on that calendar. As this calendar turns in this direction, like that, it in turn revolves this calendar in large cycles. This one just goes around and around and around, and this one goes around in 360-day increments. Every 52 revolutions of this calendar, these two teeth match back up. It was a very special time in the Mayan civilization.
to, t to show you how seriously they took all of this, every 52 tune, they would have a celebration, a big celebration, where in the, the night before, they would put out every fire and every spark in their whole entire civilization. Every bit of fire was extinguished and was relit at the temples the next morning and then distributed by the priests to the people and by runners to the villages. And they spread fire throughout their whole civilization once again. All debts were absolved and they started all over. That's a big commitment, don't you think? Can you imagine purposefully blacking out all the electricity throughout our entire civilization? I mean all the batteries too. No embers. Completely turning off all the electricity because of an event on your calendar. Can you imagine that? Not our civilization. <laughs> we're looking at something completely differently, aren't we? When they, when they uh, put out every single fire, was it a 24 hour period that they went from, like how long a period was it that you, like, you said like from, was it dawn to dusk or what? Yeah, it was put out in the, at night and then started the next morning. All of them were, every fire was extinguished from like noon on. They put out all the fires, so that night there was no fire. Okay? By the way, an interesting point that, um, I'll, I'll touch on it now, we may cover it a little bit more in depth later. The Maya divided each day into 13 hours, not 24 hours. 13 hours. And then they divided those 13 hours, just notice 13 intentions, then they divided the 13 hours into what we would call minutes, then they divided those 13 minutes into what we would call seconds, and then they divided those 13 seconds by 13, and that by 13, and that by 13, and that by 13, and 13, and 13, and 13, to where every single moment was individually divided by 13. Infinitely. That was their understanding. So, this was very, very central to the Maya's understanding. Note, there are no planets or moons or anything going around our sun every 260 days. There are no planets or moons or any objects going around every 360 days either. Although I guess it's a coincidence that every planet and every galaxy throughout the whole universe, all of them spin in 360 degrees. Our calendar only has to do with our speck of mud going around this little speck of light we call the sun in a sea of a hundred billion stars in this one galaxy out of a hundred billion galaxies in the universe. So how big is our calendar? Our calendar is completely insignificant. On the other hand, these guys were looking at something a lot bigger. Now, there's a fella by the name of Carl Jahan Kalaman. He's a Swedish uh, microbiologist. For 30 years, he's worked in laboratories, looking through microscopes at smaller and smaller particles of, or parts of life. Okay, very exacting, meticulous work. Most of his work had to do with, uh, uh, with entomology, with, excuse me, with uh, pollution and its effects on the cell and how it causes diseases. 
That's most of his work. And he was inspired by a visit down to the Maya lands to start studying the Mayan calendar. He took it up as a hobby to begin with. But he started studying it with his clinical techniques to find out what he could prove about the calendar rather than what he thought or conjectured about the calendar, which is what's all been going on so far. All the archaeologists have their own idea, and they kind of match up with other people's ideas about what this was all about. Mr. Coleman took a different route. I myself am an artist, a sculptor. I'm not an archaeologist or didn't even go to school much. I just, I'm an artist. And I was approaching the calendar from more of an, um, a heart space or intuitive space. And when I came up with this, Coleman saw it in Sweden. And he sent me this. <laughs> and we eventually met in Cancun. And when we put our two informations together, the product is this talk. Okay? What Coleman found is what these guys were timing. They certainly weren't timing any physical cycles of things in our solar system. What were they timing? Okay. <clears throat> There's a stone in a place called Koba. I hope you can see this. Maybe you can focus in with the camera on this. At least. Um, so at least it's on the video. Uh, this is only one side of the stone. It actually goes over and down like this. It's big. This thing stands 12 feet high out of the ground. I don't know how much it goes into the ground, but it's 12 feet high. It's over seven feet wide. It's that thick. Big rock. The archaeologists found it in the late 40s, laying face down in the jungle. And when they stood it up, it had all these carvings all over it, all these Mayan dates, and, and, a, and a king who stands right here. But all of these dates have to do with the Tune calendar. It's numbers of those cycles, okay? Numbers of times those cycles have happened. And it's big, big numbers. We'll be talking about it in a minute. When the, when the stone was first stood up, the archaeologists did a rubbing of, you know, a charcoal rubbing. And it's a good thing they did because when the stone dried out from having laid in the jungle for so long, it just... You can't read it now. Madeline and I have been there. We stood right by the stone. I kissed the stone. I really did. <laughs> and you can't read anything on it. In fact, when it was first rubbed, the archaeologists didn't know what it meant either. But since, we have then translated the, the writing. And now we can read it with the aid of computers. You can read it just like a newspaper. And what that stone says is the structure of the Mayan calendar. The Mayan calendar is in nine different levels. Okay, does that look like a pyramid to you? That's good. That's why all those pyramids down there are all nine levels. Because those big structures that the Maya built out of stone were ceremonial centers to approximate or to show people the progression up this ladder or up these steps. I'm going to write bigger. It also shows that each one of these levels is subdivided into 13 individual sections. There goes that top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On the Mayan calendar, there are seven periods of light in each one of these levels. There's seven periods of light, and there's, seven, there's six periods of dark. 
seven days and six nights to each level of creation. Where have we heard that before? Genesis? Hmm. As a matter of fact, the Mesopotamians and the Sumerians, the first people to write, wrote in croon form on clay tablets that each level of creation had seven days and six nights. So the Maya weren't the first people to have this information. There were other civilizations earlier. But the Maya were the most recent ancient civilization. They left the freshest tracks, which is why Coleman and I have picked up on it. Okay? The days, each day is a period of enlightenment or increase in consciousness. And each night is a period of applying that consciousness. You've done that all your life. You've learned something new and then went out and applied it, haven't you? You get all excited about something you just learned and then you run out and you do it. Interesting, during that application, sometimes you learn what you didn't already know. These are called mistakes. <laughs> Where you go out, you, you get all excited, and you, you learn about it. Remember, guys, when we first learned about hammer, wood, and nails? <laughs> hmm? And how to put things together. You just pound them boards together. And you, bam! Ow! Now you know something more than you did before. We'll see that sometimes, during this application stage, uh, there's things that look like mistakes. But it's all part of the learning process, isn't it? So this very first cycle that was carved some 2,500 years ago on this rock started 16.4 billion, that's billion with a B, billion years ago. This is why this information hasn't been studied by the archaeologists. The archaeologists could not conceive of why Indians making pots in the jungle would have any business thinking about 16.4 billion years. So they just put it on the shelf and nobody else looked at it until Coleman came along. In fact, when this stone was unearthed, the astro, the astronomers, you know, the guys that was looking out into the galaxies, they had postulated that the universe, the Big Bang, happened somewhere between 20 and 10 billion years ago. And then later, as we got better and better telescopes, we could see further out into that. And then they went, well, no, it wasn't 20. It was like 12 billion years ago. And that was it. So this was impossible. Well, now we've updated Hubble, and we've found that there are things out there 14 and a half billion years old. I bet you that in the next few years, <laughs> we're going to find out that the Maya had it right on, that the Big Bang happened 16.4 billion of our years ago. Understand that this is an exact number of tunes of 360 day cycles, but when you work it to our year, it gets to a fraction. Okay. This whole cycle, 16.4 billion years, is divided into 13 different sections. Each one of them, 1.26 billion years long. So a day in this cycle was one, billion, or one and a quarter billion years. And each night lasted for one and a quarter billion years. Okay? Each one of these has a particular intention in creation. We won't go into that right now, but each one of them has a particular intention. And has followed all these intentions all the way across. This 
cycle has a name for its product, what it produced. It's called the cellular cycle because way over here at the very, very end, in this last section, in the seventh day, what happened 1.26 billion years ago is the first live cell on this planet. Now, up until that time, consciousness was very busy. Consciousness was busy creating a, or doing business. You know, it had a particular mode by which it was operating. And it was operating in the mode of action, reaction. I'll just abbreviate it here. But action, reaction was this whole cycle. Chemical, gravitational, frictional, all of the physical laws that we understand and still use today, all of those things were established from the Big Bang forward. Then we'll go through some of the detail of what happened in these <clears throat> in just a minute. The very next cycle, carved on that rock, started 820 million years ago. <clears throat> 820 million years ago. And it started going through these same 13 steps. Each one of those steps taking 63.4 million years each. This one was 1.26 billion years each. This one's only 63.4 million years each. Yes? A day to a day? Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that question. And the answer is creation has the deck stacked in consciousness's favor. We go from a day to another day. Okay? This whole cycle, 820 million years, fits very tidily into 1.26 billion, doesn't it? This whole cycle fits in that box very comfortably. Does that make sense? So we got all the way over here to this last light, and then we got another light. And this started a whole nother process. <clears throat> this has a name for its product. Mammalian cycle. Why? Because 63.4 million years ago, what happened? The first live births. Now back here, right at this line, individual cells started clumping together for cooperation for better survival. And then they evolved stage by stage by stage into more and more complex organisms. And when you go to study this on your own, because we won't, I'm not going to drag you through all the detail, or we might as well just talk about the book. You know? It's better for you to study the detail on your own. But you will find that all the developments of individual cells into shell life, into fishes, into reptiles, into birds, and finally into mammals and then us, all of that went stage by stage by stage. It's not a coincidence. We're on a schedule. And it's provable by the historic record, the paleontological record. You have the, the center right here, the, the mastodons and what's called the burnage. Yeah. What is it, what is it again? Beresia. Beringia Center. And you can go and, and confirm this for yourself. Here we go. This whole consciousness cycle 
had a way of doing business too. It's called stimulus response. All of this consciousness was building on a survival tool or a method called stimulus response. It's still working now. That's because we're still living in this 1.26 billion years. And those laws that were established then are still working. That's a level of consciousness, a foundation. Here, we built the consciousness of stimulus response and mammals. I see a whole lot of mammals out there. It's, we're still living in this 63.4 million years. The next cycle started 41 million years ago. It's called the familiar cycle. Familial. It has to do with the families. Monkeys showed up 40 million years ago, right near the very beginning of this cycle. And what monkeys did is they brought along a consciousness, the consciousness of stimulus, individual response. Individual response. Down here we had hives and nests and swarms and schools and herds and flocks. And you've seen enough wildlife to know if you startle them, the whole herd, boom, off like a shot, right? The whole school of fish, the whole pile of ants. It's all stimulus response, everybody goes. In this case, though, in these stages, each one of them, 3.2 million years long. The monkeys and their ancestors and their ancestors and their ancestors built the concept of family. What's the difference between a family and a herd? The recognition of the individual. And it is definitely a survival tool you're much more flexible as an individual, much more choice of how to survive rather than being one of the pack. Right now, I dare say, in our societies and world, there are a lot of people who would have you give up your individuality. Get in line, sit down, shut up, and become one of the pack. Don't do it. Creation has invested a lot into you attaining your individuality. Don't throw it away. Thanks. <laughs> okay, two million years ago, we started a new cycle. This is called the tribal cycle. Not so un coincidentally, two million years ago, right at this line, Australopithecus showed up, the first tailless ape, a really distant ancestor of ours. But as we came through all these 13 stages, we went further and further toward Homo erectus and then Homo sapien, which showed up 160,000 years ago. Each one of these is 160,000 years. So 160,000 years ago was the beginning of this seventh day, and that is when Homo sapiens showed up. We are on a schedule. Now, this whole, this whole cycle was producing a certain kind of consciousness or a tool for survival, and that was similarities and differences. the mind. Here, we put down the tail and picked up the mind as a survival tool. The tail was a very useful survival tool down here. Down here, fangs and, and claws were good. But here, the tail, 
here, the mind. And the mind is a tool to look or notice the similarities and differences in things and in circumstances. Not to just react, but to decide. Okay? To decide. Much more powerful tool for survival. Then, 102,000 years ago, we started another cycle, the cultural cycle. This too, this cultural cycle, had its own brand of consciousness. And this brand of consciousness was reasons. Now, it started off in the caves, way back here, 102,000 years ago. People huddled around the fire in front of the cave. And one guy, who eventually would become called the shaman, he came up with the reasons for things. He came up with the reason for rain, the reason for stars, the reason for the moon, <clears throat> the reason for fire. He had the reasons. If you really, really look at it, the basis of culture is shared reasons. Like an Islamic person, the reason he lives is for Allah. A Christian, he lives for Christ. That's his reason. The main, the, the foundation of all cultures is shared reasons for things. And what happened here is these cycles, each one of these different divisions, each of them being almost, I'm rounding it up, but they're almost 8,000 years for each one of these days or nights. What happened way over here 8,000 years ago, we developed agriculture. Agriculture. Well, there have been lots of them, actually, <laughs> along the way. So, here we are, next cycle. 3115 BC is when this one started. It's called the National Cycle. Because the, most, the modern nation was produced from this consciousness. Each one of these steps or stages is 397, almost 400 years. 3115 BC, by the way, is when we learn to write. So uh, all of this is her story, and from here on up, it's his story. <laughs> Also, right on this line, right on that line, is when King Minas of the Upper and Lower Nile cultures married the two cultures into the first nation called Egypt. Right there. And ever since then, there has been this evolution of the concept of nations, borders, terrorists, armies. Law. Law. This whole consciousness was about law. And if you have studied the Hebrew Bible, this 3115 BC date is awfully close to when the Hebrew Bible states Adam and Eve were kicked out of the Garden of Eden and into the consciousness of right and wrong crime and punishment. You see, down here, there wasn't right or wrong. There was just reasons. There was reasons for things. There were certainly consequences for your actions. They happened for reasons. 
But there wasn't a law. There wasn't some guy going to come and beat your head in. You know? It was natural happenstances and natural consequences rather than human-imposed sanctions. That started right there and has evolved to where we are right now. And we'll go into a little bit, just a little bit of detail about, about these different cycles, how they evolved. The next one is called the planetary consciousness. It started in 1755 A.D. Remember your European history? What was happening 1755 A.D.? Ooh, the Industrial Revolution started in Europe. Each one of these days and nights were 19.7 of our years. Okay? Each one of these days and nights. And this whole consciousness cycle from 1755 up to today and into tomorrow is all about one thing. Power. Raw, unmitigated power. This is when we started coming up with machines to do the work of men and animals. The water wheels, and then steam power, and then electrical power, and then internal combustion, and then nuclear, and it has evolved stage by stage by stage. We're on a schedule. This line right here, this line, the beginning of the seventh day, was 1992. What happened in 1992? www.com. The internet went up in 1992 manifesting a planetary consciousness, huh? It is now a global consciousness. And it turned on right there at the very beginning of the seventh day. Either we've got a 16.4 billion year long string of coincidence, or we're on a schedule. The next cycle on that rock is one that we've just recently started. It's called the galactic consciousness cycle. If you think I'm kidding, get over that. Do we have a national consciousness? Are we living as part of that? Do we have a planetary consciousness? The galactic consciousness cycle started January 5th, 1999. And ever since then, we've been finding lots more out about our galaxy, haven't we? We're now finding other planets around other stars. We've now mapped our entire galaxy. We now know the density of the center of the galaxy. We have discovered the black hole in the center. We're finding out a lot more, much, much quicker than ever before. <clears throat> and these days and nights, each day and each night lasts for 360 days. Hmm. I saw some light bulbs go on out there. <laughs> Let me go ahead and do this one right here. I'm going to go into what is coming. This, there's another cycle coming. The universal, the universal consciousness cycle. Again, I'm not kidding. 
universal consciousness cycle. It begins on February 10th, 2011. During this consciousness cycle, each one of these shifts and changes will last for, or will take 20 days. Um, this, this ethical, I mean, this, this galactic consciousness cycle started January 5th, 1999. It has a type of consciousness that it is operating under or developing. And that type of consciousness, in case you haven't already noticed, ethics. What is happening to the power elite corporations that are in power across this planet? What is happening to them right now? They're getting in a lot of hot water. Their ethics are being put in, aren't they? Um, yes? Um, something that I've noticed is um, I have myself have gotten involved in a few different MLM companies and been watching what's been going on. Huh? And it's really interesting how a company will start up and they seem to have integrity and everybody says, oh, this is great, and they all jump on board. And the minute they lose integrity, it is amazing how many people just are gone from that company, lost their integrity, they have no ethics, and people are leaving them in masses. Yes. Consciousness is not just us. Consciousness is this pen, the air you're breathing, the tree standing outside. Consciousness is all of creation. It's not just people. Consciousness is everything. Just a moment. We're going to get, get the mic over here. Consciousness is everything. And everything is oriented to ethics. Yes? What was the event that uh, precipitated the uh, advent of the galactic consciousness? Oh, there wasn't, oh no, a consciousness first, then event. It consciousness goes consciousness, first. light, thought, event. Well, remember what you were doing January 5th? January 5th of 99? Do you remember what you were doing? As a matter of fact, that's when you were first hearing about Y2K. That's when that consciousness that your systems that you're dependent upon are not all that reliable was planted during that period of time. That consciousness that the power you rely on is not the end all of your existence and that it could all go away in just a microsecond. That consciousness was January 5th, 1999. If you were looking for an event or, yeah, okay. And we've come further and further along. Right now, by the way, right now we're in this cycle. We're in the third night. We'll talk more, much more in depth about this particular stage that we're in right now. In this cycle, we're down there. Okay? This universal consciousness cycle will have its own purpose, and that purpose is conscious co creation. Conscious co creation. Now, it's pretty evident that we are already co-creating our experience. For instance, if you weren't here, this event wouldn't be happening, would it? If any one of you were gone, it wouldn't be the same experience, would it? 
So we are all co-creating our experience all of the time. We're usually not as conscious about it as we could be, though. And where this is all leading is to our full ability to consciously co-create our experience. That's a big idea. And we're going to build some more groundwork on how that happens and how it can possibly happen. Can we have the microphone, please? Very last, it's the very last level of the whole thing. It only runs part of a year. Yeah, 260 days. This whole cycle is 260 days long. Uh, the question was, okay, after that 260 days, then what? Uh, you have to wait. <laughs> We're going to get to that during this talk. We're going to get right to it. Okay? I promise. You're gonna, the whole Mayan calendar comes to a screeching halt. It ends completely on October 28, 2011. Every one of these cycles comes to a boom stop on that day. You will know what happens and why as best as we can be explained. But there's some explaining to do before we get there. Okay? Now, the way this works is you've noticed that there's a constant acceleration here. Maybe some of you have noticed that time seems to be speeding up. Yes? Well, that's not exactly true. Time is not speeding up. Creation is. There's more and more event in less and less time than ever before. And it's going to keep on accelerating and keep on accelerating. You want to have a very personal experience of how much change there is between here and here? You want to know? Because all of you have a very direct experience of how much consciousness shift there is between one of these days and the next night, or then that night and the next day. Every one of you were born during this period, during the end of this planetary cycle, when things were changing once every 19.7 years. You were born to a couple of really nice people called your parents. And up until you were old, 13, 15 years old, everything was going along just fine. Then you started noticing something. And you know, those people who claimed that they were your parents, those embarrassments that like loaded you up in the car and took you places. Remember that? This, that difference of point of view, you knew for sure, and whether you did it politely or not so politely, you knew for sure that you were more capable of handling situations and new information than your parents ever could or ever would. This was called the generation gap when people were talking about that sort of thing. And studies were done all over about how long the generation gap was and they came out with the idea that it was 20 years long. There. That's how much consciousness shift there is between one of these days and one of those nights. 
what used to happen in 19.7 years, the amount of change that happened in 19.7 years now happens every 360 days. Does that answer a couple of questions? Of why you feel a little overwhelmed from time to time. Get used to it. Or get over it. We are the Prozac Nation. This is why we're going to talk in depth about that. The reason I said either get used to it or get over it is because here, what used to take almost a year, the same amount of change will be happening every 20 days. You guys, uh, some of you out there are the age where you would have gone to school for a career. You know, invested years of your life toward a particular career. Maybe you're on your third. By the time we get up into here, forget about it. Not that far away at all. This is a real situation. And this is really why we have these talks. Because without an understanding, without some plausible understanding of what it is that is happening, not just to you, but to everybody, it's really difficult to handle it. And the more people do understand, and the more in depth you understand, the easier it's going to be to go through these transitions. You see, there's two things that are going on here. And then I'm going to go into some more detail, a little bit more detail. There's good things and there's bad things. The bad is that you were getting overwhelmed. The good is that there's more and more possible to occur all the time. Things that were completely impossible, miracles, things that would never happen back here, now are your daily life, like cell phones, for instance. Video phones, that kind of thing. So I want to take and show you that this process, it's like a constant acceleration. I mean, a constant from here all the way through it accelerates. And then it starts accelerating from here and it goes faster and faster and faster. But each time it's 20 times faster. What happens is, if, imagine you're in a big semi-truck, sitting still in a parking lot. When you take off, you're going to take off in first gear, right? And you're going to go faster and faster and faster and faster until you're getting going as fast as you can in that gear. Then what do you do? You put in the clutch. That's this point right here. You put in the clutch, you reach for another gear, you let out the clutch, and you accelerate into that next gear. Very mechanical. I hope that that builds a good picture, because what we're going to be talking about. It accelerated from the Big Bang, accelerated faster and faster and faster, all the way up to this fifth day. Now, you understand that things were bashing into one another and blending in, in solar systems, exploding and all that, all the way up till about five billion years ago which was this fifth day. What happened then? That was the birthday of our solar system. In every one of these fifth days, it's the biggest opening for consciousness of the whole deal. It races up to that point and then, wow! Okay? So it go, 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 all the way up till this period, and then the solar system was formed. That's a big event for all of us. Then, during this fifth night, that's when everything gets applied, right? What happened? 250 million years of meteor bombardment. All the leftover junk in the solar system started plowing into all the formed planets. 
and the moons, Luna still has all the scars. All of the other planets without atmospheres still have the craters on them. Ours are a little bit toned down, but the, uh, the big Hudson Bay, Hudson Bay is a crater from that period of time. There are many, there's about five major ones on this planet that are still pretty prominent. Those meteors just plowed into everything. Good thing they did too. Because every drop of water on this planet came in with those comets. Every single drop. If that didn't happen, your bodies would be really small. Because you're like 87% water. Yes? Hi. Um, I, I've been watching some of your tapes and, uh, and previous talks, and I remember when you brought this out, I was thinking, okay, my question would be, like, okay, with the book that you brought out by Dr. Kalaman, is this where all of this information is coming from? I mean, I never learned that kind of thing in school. Yeah. Well, no, actually, so the, it, the information, both of us have done a lot of research. So it's a sci there's scientific backup on all of this. Absolutely. Scientific proof of, of all of that. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. There is scientific proof of everything that we're talking about. If there is not, I'm going to say it's conjecture. Because there is... There's, one coming up, as a matter of fact, a conjecture. <laughs> so, that's what happened. Big breakthrough and then big bombs. Okay? Then, in this cycle, this fifth day, 315 million years ago, what happened is life took a walk on the beach. Everything back here is underwater. All the development of life was underwater. In the fifth day, the animals started crawling out onto the beach. Life moved to the land. 315 million years ago. Look it up. Then, during the fifth night, 97% of all life went extinct. In the perm Jurassic extinction period. Pow! Another one of those comets slammed into the earth and 97% of all life was eradicated. The only thing left was little squiggly worms in the mud at the bottom of oceans. And it all evolved back. We have the paleontological records of all of this. Up here, in this familiar section, during the fifth day, this is when life scientists conjecture that color vision was installed in mammals. Color vision came in right then. And right here, during this fifth night, we don't know what happened. We don't have any conclusive data of anything that occurred there. But the monkeys made it, or we wouldn't be here whatever they went through. But here, in the tribal cycle, this fifth day is 800,000 years ago. And something very special happened during this fifth day. Very important. Fire. It's when the Homo erectus got the consciousness of fire all over the world, all the different places. It was sort of like the 100th monkey syndrome. Within, like, within some 3,500, 4,000 years, everybody had the consciousness of fire during that fifth day. It's a really good thing, too, because 68,000 years ago, 680,000 years ago, we had the Elonian Ice Age during the fifth night.